The Second Anglo-Sikh War was a military conflict between the Sikh Empire and the British East India Company that took place in 1848 and 1849. It resulted in the fall of the Sikh Empire, and the annexation of the Punjab and what subsequently became the Northwest Frontier Province, by the East India Company. On April 19, 1848 Patrick Vans Agnew of the Civil Service and Lieutenant William Anderson of the Bombay European Regiment, having been sent to take charge of Moulton from Dewan Mulraj, were murdered there, and within a short time the Sikh troops and Sardars joined in open rebellion. Governor-General of India Lord Dalhousie agreed with Sir Hugh Gough, the Commander-in-Chief, that the British East India Company's military forces were neither adequately equipped with transport and supplies, nor otherwise prepared to take the field immediately. He also foresaw the spread of the rebellion, and the necessity that must arise, not merely for the capture of Moulton, but also for the entire subjugation of the Punjab. He therefore resolutely delayed to strike, organized a strong army for operations in November, and himself proceeded to the Punjab. Despite the brilliant successes gained by Herbert Edwardus in the Second Anglo-Sikh War with Mulraj, and Gough's indecisive victories at Ramnagar in November, at Sadulapur in December, and at the Battle of Chilianwala on January 13, 1849, the stubborn resistance at Moulton showed that the task required the utmost resources of the government. At length, on January 22, the Moulton Fortress was taken by General Wish, who was thus set at liberty to join Gough at Gujarat. Here a complete victory was won on the February 21 at the Battle of Gujarat, the Sikh army surrendered at Rawalpindi, and their Afghan allies were chased out of India. After the victory at Gujarat, Lord Dalhousie annexed the Punjab for the East India Company in 1849. For his services the Earl of Dalhousie received the thanks of the British Parliament and a step in the peerage, as Marquess. The Sikh wars gave the two sides a mutual respect for each other's fighting prowess. The Sikhs would fight loyally for the British in the Indian Mutiny and in many other campaigns and wars up until Indian independence in 1947. <laughs> <laughs> Background of the war The Sikh Kingdom of the Punjab was consolidated and expanded by Maharaja Ranjit Singh during the early years of the 19th century. During the same period, the British East India Company's territories had been expanded until they were adjacent to the Punjab. Ranjit Singh maintained an uneasy alliance with the East India Company, while increasing the military strength of the Sikh Khalsa Army, which also saw itself as the embodiment of the state and religion, to deter British aggression against his state and to expand Sikh territory to the north and northwest, capturing territory from Afghanistan and Kashmir. When Ranjit Singh died in 1839, the Sikh Empire began to fall into disorder. There was a succession of short-lived rulers at the central Durbar court, and increasing tension between the army and the Durbar. The East India Company began to build up its military strength on the borders of the Punjab. Eventually, the increasing tension goaded the Sikh army to invade British territory, under weak and possibly treacherous leaders. The hard-fought First Anglo-Sikh War ended in defeat for the Sikh army. Aftermath of the First Anglo-Sikh War At the end of the war, the Sikh Empire was forced to cede some valuable territory the Jalandar Dobe to the East India Company, and Gulab Singh, the ruler of Jammu, was allowed to acquire entire Jammu and Kashmir from the Sikh Empire by a large cash payment to the East India Company. Some of the Sikh army were forced to make an expedition to oust the governor of Kashmir in favor of Gulab Singh. The infant Maharaja Duleep Singh of the Sikh Empire was allowed to retain his throne, but a British resident, Sir Henry Lawrence, controlled the policy of the Durbar. Duleep Singh's mother, Maharani Jin Kaur, continually tried to regain some of her former influence as regent and was eventually exiled by Lawrence. While some Sikh generals and courtiers welcomed her dismissal, others resented Lawrence's action. Some of the Sikh army had to be kept in being, since many predominantly Muslim areas of the Sikh empire threatened to ally with Dust Muhammad Khan in Afghanistan or to lapse into disorder, and only force of arms could keep them in subjugation. The British were unwilling to incur the financial and manpower costs of using large numbers of British or Bengal army units for this task. To the contrary, the Governor-General of India, Viscount Hardinge sought to make economies after the war by reducing the size of the Bengal army by 50,000 men. 
The Sardars generals of the Sikh army naturally resented carrying out the orders of comparatively junior British officers and administrators. Early in 1848, Sir Henry Lawrence, who was ill, departed on leave to England. Although it was assumed that his younger brother John Lawrence would be appointed in his place, Lord Dalhousie, who had replaced Lord Hardinge as Governor-General, appointed Sir Frederick Curry instead. Curry was a legalist, based in Calcutta, who was unfamiliar with military matters and with the Punjab. While the Lawrences were comparatively informal and familiar with the junior officers who were residents and agents in the various districts of the Punjab, Curry was stiffer in manner and was inclined to treat his subordinates' reports with caution. In particular, he refused to act on reports from James Abbott, the political agent in Hazara, who was convinced that Sardar Chatter Singh Atarawala, the Sikh governor of Hazara, was actively plotting a rebellion with other Sardars. <laughs> First outbreak The city of Multan was part of the Sikh kingdom, having been captured by Ranjit Singh in 1818. In 1848, it was governed by a Hindu viceroy, Dewan Mulraj. After the end of the First Anglo-Sikh War, Mulraj had behaved independently. When he was required by the British-controlled Durbar in Lahore to pay an increased tax assessment and revenues which were in arrears, Mulraj attempted to give up power to his son, so as to maintain his family's position as rulers. Curry instead imposed a Sikh governor, Sardar Kahan Singh, with a British political agent, Lieutenant Patrick Vans Agnew. On 18 April 1848, Vans Agnew arrived at Moulton with another officer, Lieutenant William Anderson, and a small escort. Mulraj handed over the keys of the fortress, but as Vans Agnew's party attempted to take possession, they were attacked by a party of Mulraj's irregular troops, and a mob from the city. Both officers were wounded, and were rescued by Kahan Singh. They were taken to a mosque outside the city. Their escorts defected to Mulraj, and the officers were murdered by the mob the next day. Mulraj later claimed that he had not instigated these attacks, but he was committed to rebellion because of them. He presented Vans Agnew's head to Sardar Kahan Singh, and told him to take it back to Lahore. The news of the killings spread over the Punjab, and unrest and disquiet increased. Large numbers of Sikh soldiers deserted the regiments loyal to the Durbar to join those prepared to rebel under the leadership of Mulraj and disaffected Sardars. Topic. Subsequent outbreaks Lieutenant Herbert Edwardus, the British political agent in Banu, had been near Moulton in April but was unable to save Vans Agnew. He hastily levied some Pakhtun irregular troops, and together with some Sikh regiments, defeated Mulraj's army at the Battle of Canary near the Chenab River on 18 June. He drove them back to the city but was unable to attack the fortified city itself. Meanwhile, on learning of the events at Moulton, Curry wrote to Sir Hugh Gough, the commander-in-chief of the Bengal army, recommending that a major British force should at once move upon Moulton. However Gough, supported by Dalhousie, the governor-general, declined to order major units of the East India Company to the Punjab until the end of the hot weather and monsoon seasons, which would not be until November. Instead, Curry ordered only a small force from the Bengal army under General Wish to begin the siege of the city, joined by several contingents of locally recruited irregulars and detachments of the Sikh Khalsa army. These forces joined Edwardus at Moulton between 18 and 28 August. To the alarm of several political agents, the force from the Sikh army included a large contingent commanded by Sardar Sher Singh Atarawala, Chatter Singh's son. Some agents were already taking action to forestall outbreaks of rebellion. Captain John Nicholson, leading irregular cavalry based at Peshawar, seized the vital fort of Atak on the Indus River from its Sikh garrison while they were still unprepared, or undecided on rebellion. Nicholson's force then linked up with James Abbott's local Hazara levies to capture the Margala Hills which separated Hazara from the other parts of the Punjab. When Chatter Singh openly rebelled in August, his force was unable to leave Hazara without fighting a battle. Although Chatter Singh twice succeeded in capturing the passes through the hills, he nevertheless failed to take advantage of this possibly because of dissension among his senior officers and continual harassment by pro-British irregulars, and retreated into Hazara. On 14 September, Sher Singh's army openly rebelled at Moulton. He did not join Mulraj however. 
He and Mulraj conferred at a carefully chosen neutral site, at which it was agreed that Mulraj would give some money from his treasury to Sher Singh's army, which would march north into the central Punjab and ultimately rejoin Chatter Singh. Meanwhile, Wish was forced to raise the siege until he was reinforced. <laughs> Course of the war As the cold weather began in November, substantial contingents from the East India Company's armies at last took the field. A contingent from the Bombay Army administered separately from the Bengal Army had been ordered to reinforce Wish and besiege Moulton. This force was delayed by a petty squabble over seniority and could arrive only when its first commander who was senior to Wish and refused to serve under him was replaced by a more junior officer. Wish's army was supplied and reinforced by sea and river transport up the rivers Indus and Chenab. Sir Hugh Goff led his main force against Sher Singh's army, which defended the line of the river Chenab against Goff for several weeks. On the 22nd of November, the Sikhs repelled a British cavalry attack on a bridgehead on the eastern side of the river at the Battle of Ramnagar. Although they subsequently withdrew from their exposed bridgehead, the Sikhs regarded the battle as a victory and their morale was raised. Goff forced his way across the Chenab in December and outflanked the Sikhs defending the fords, but his cavalry then paused to await infantry reinforcements, allowing the Sikhs to withdraw without interference. At the start of 1849, Amir Dust Muhammad Khan of Afghanistan sided with the rebellious Sikhs, who agreed to cede the city of Peshawar and its surrounding area which had been conquered by Ranjit Singh early in the 19th century. Dust Muhammad Khan's support of the Sikhs was cautious, but when 3,500 Afghan horsemen approached the vital fort of Atak on the Indus River, its garrison of Muslim troops installed earlier by Nicholson defected. This allowed Chatter Singh to move out of Hazara and march west and then south, intending to link up with Sher Singh's army. Dalhousie had earlier ordered Goff to halt operations while waiting for Moulton to fall, which would allow Wish to reinforce him. Learning of the fall of Atak, he instead ordered Goff to destroy Sher Singh's army before Chatter Singh could join him. Goff unexpectedly encountered Sher Singh's position near the Jhelum River on 13 January 1849. Sher Singh had cunningly concealed his army, and Goff was faced with the choice of withdrawing, or attacking when it was late in the day. Goff unhesitatingly took the latter course. The resulting Battle of Chilianwala was desperately fought. Goff's troops, attacking into thick scrub without effective artillery support, suffered heavy losses. Some units lost their colours which was regarded as a disgrace and part of one British cavalry regiment fled in panic, resulting in the loss of four guns, also reckoned a humiliation. Sher Singh's army was also hard hit, losing twelve of its own guns. Three days of heavy rain followed, discouraging both sides from renewing battle. After both armies had faced each other for three days without renewing the action, both withdrew. Sher Singh continued northwards to join Chatter Singh, which made the battle into a strategic British defeat. There was much alarm at the losses Goff had suffered. His tactics were severely criticised and he was replaced by General Charles James Napier, although the order did not arrive until after hostilities had ceased. Some junior officers reckoned that the true cause of the setback lay lower down the ranks. Promotion in both the British and Bengal armies came slowly, and by the time officers were appointed to command regiments and brigades, they were too old, and worn out by harsh climate and disease. At Chilianwala, several senior officers had proved unable to command their units effectively. <laughs> <laughs> Last battles Meanwhile, Wish's force completed their siege works around Moulton, their batteries opened fire and made a breach in the defences, which the infantry stormed. Mulraj surrendered on of January. He was imprisoned for the remainder of his life. The ending of the siege allowed Wish to reinforce Goff. In particular, Wish's division had large numbers of heavy guns, which the Sikhs lacked. As Goff's army closed in on the Sikh army, Sher Singh attempted a last outflanking move, sending cavalry to cross the Chenab, and re-cross in Goff's rear. They were thwarted by heavy rains which made the river difficult to cross, and by British irregular cavalry led by Harry Burnett Lumsden and William Hodson. On 13 February, Goff attacked the Sikh army at the Battle of Gurat. Here, he began the battle with a three-hour bombardment from almost 100 guns, which drove the Sikhs from their hasty entrenchments. 
He then sent his cavalry and horse artillery after them in a pursuit which lasted for four hours. On 12 March, Chatter Singh and Sher Singh surrendered near Rawalpindi. Some 20,000 men mainly irregular cavalry laid down their arms. The Afghan contingent hastily withdrew through Atak and Peshawar, which the British reoccupied. Dust Muhammad Khan later signed a treaty acknowledging British possession of these cities. On 30 March, Duleep Singh held his last court at Lahore, at which he signed away all claims to the rule of the Punjab. A proclamation by Dalhousie, annexing the Punjab, was then read out. For his services the Earl of Dalhousie received the thanks of the British Parliament and a step in the peerage, as Marquess. Gough also received rewards for his services, although his tactics at Chilianwala were to be questioned for the remainder of his life. Many of the junior British political agents who had organised local resistance to the Sikh armies were to have distinguished later careers. Aftermath The Sikh defeat had resulted from several causes. Their administration of the population of the Punjab had been poor, which meant that their large armies found it difficult to find enough food. Finally, the East India Company had brought overwhelming force against them. The Sikh wars gave the two sides a mutual respect for each other's fighting prowess although the war itself had been unchivalrously fought, the Sikhs took no prisoners at Chilianwala, and the British had taken no prisoners at Gurat. There was an increased recruitment of people from various communities of the Punjab in the Punjab Irregular Force under British command. These recruits fought for the East India Company during the Indian Rebellion of 1857, against the mutineers and other opponents mostly high-caste Hindus from eastern provinces, and forces or loyalists of Shia, Maratha and Mughal rulers. These Punjabi recruits had especially little sympathy with the Hindu mutineers of the Bengal army, ironically contributed to by the latter's role in helping the British in the Anglo-Sikh wars. A long history of enmity of the Sikhs with Mughal rule did not help the mutineers' cause either, given their choice of Bahadur Shah Zafar as a symbolic leader. Topic battle honor The battle honor Punjab was distributed with a free hand to all regiments employed in the operations of the Anglo-Sikh Wars during 1848-49 Vide Gazette of the Governor-General 277 of 1849, and the list of regiments honored was issued Vide. Gog 803 of 1853. The Bombay Army was awarded separately and the spelling was changed from Punjab to Punjab Vide Gazette of India No. 1079 of 1910. Forty of the honoured units of the Bengal Army were consumed by the mutiny. India has now raised a memorial at Ferozepur to pay homage to men of the Sikh Khalsa Army who laid down their lives in the Anglo Sikh Wars, and the battle honour is considered to be repugnant. Units awarded this honour were 2nd Bengal Irregular Cavalry, presently 2nd Lancers, Gardner's Horse 1st, 2nd Sindha Irregular Horse, presently Sindha Horse 7th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, presently 3rd Cavalry, 17th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, presently 18th Cavalry, 1st, Company Bombay Foot Artillery, 5 Mountain B. Bty 1st, 2nd, 3rd Companies Bengal Sappers and 1st through 7th Companies Bengal Pioneers, presently Bengal Engineer Group Bombay Sappers and Miners, presently Bombay Engineer Group 9th Bombay Infantry 4th Battalion, the Grenadier 3rd Bombay Infantry 1st Battalion, the Maratha Light Infantry 4th Bombay Infantry 1st Battalion, the Rajputana Rifles, presently 3rd Battalion, the Brigade of Guards 31st Bengal Infantry 1st Battalion, the Rajput Regiment, presently 4th Battalion, Battalion, the Brigade of Guards 70th Bengal Infantry 5th Battalion, the Rajput Regiment 19th Bombay Infantry 2nd Battalion, the Jat Regiment Corps of Guides 10 Guides Cavalry 1st Bombay Cavalry 13th Duke of Connaught's Own Lancers 1st Sikh Local Infantry and 2nd Sikh Local Infantry 1st and 2nd Battalions, 12th Frontier Force Regiment 1st Bengal Cavalry, 5th Bengal Cavalry, 6th Bengal Cavalry, 7th Bengal Cavalry, 8th Bengal Cavalry, 11th Bengal Cavalry, Cavalry, 2nd Bengal Cavalry, Mutinied 1857. 3rd Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 9th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 11th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 12th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 13th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 14th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 15th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 16th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, Mutinied 1857, 1st Bengal Infantry, 3rd Bengal Infantry, 4th Bengal Infantry, 8th Bengal Infantry, 13th Bengal Infantry, 15th Bengal Infantry, 18th Bengal Infantry, 
20th Bengal Infantry, 22nd Bengal Infantry, 25th Bengal Infantry, 29th Bengal Infantry, 30th Bengal Infantry, 36th Bengal Infantry, 37th Bengal Infantry, 45th Bengal Infantry, 46th Bengal Infantry, 49th Bengal Infantry, 50th Bengal Infantry, 51st Bengal Infantry, 52nd Bengal Infantry, 53rd Bengal Infantry, 56th Bengal Infantry, 69th Bengal Infantry, 71st Bengal Infantry, 72nd Bengal Infantry, 73rd Bengal Infantry, Mutinied 1857. The Marine Battalion, 10th Battalion, the Bombay Pioneers, disbanded 1933. Equals equals notes. <laughs>